Okay, so we've done draining the oil for the most part. I'm going to tip the pump to get the last little bit out here. Oops. So, we're pretty much gone. So now we're going to go ahead and pull the, uh, pull the housing. So on my pump, I've created it, uh, some, some convenience items. I've added some quick disconnects. So for me to disconnect my oil lines, I just do that. And that. So now my my oil filtration system has been disconnected. So now it's just a matter of pulling the housing. So one, two, three, and four here in a second. See how much oil, how much big of a mess we make here. I want to pop this. Okay, there we go. All right, folks, that is 60 batches of oil. Sorry, 56 batches of oil. 56 right? batches. 56 batches of oil. On this oil. On this, on this oil change, if you will, because of course I'm just going to pour that oil back in. This is the inside of the container. You can see absolutely nothing, no buildup, no gunk, nothing. On the pump body itself, clean, the reeds are clean, no buildup, no gunk, no nothing. Look how nice and shiny all the all the aluminum is. It's just, you know, it's absolutely beautiful. So the, to do this is really two two major steps. Here, last thing is everybody talks about the Splash guard needing a stainless steel splash guard. There's the galvanized one after 60 batches. This has been running almost non-stop since the 19th of December. Mm -hmm. Zero rust. Um, now this housing is actually a used housing I bought because I added my fittings and I didn't want to do it that in a new housing. I've got that in the shop. But I'm going to go ahead and add that to it here. So, as you can see, this is just pristine condition. Um, you know, all of this is about opinion. Everybody has their own. But um, in my experience, the less, oops, the less you um, the less you touch this, the less you have to scrub it. The idea that we have to we have to use carburetor cleaner to clean this up is just beyond imagining for me. This is how a piece of machinery should look mm -hmm. when it's used and when it's taken care of properly. And in order to take care of this machine in this environment, which is high water and particulates, you need two things. You need the Dairyland oil or the uh, its sister, which I believe is called, um, I'm, I'm sorry, I can't call it, tell the name right now. There's a sister product. It's, it's the same blue um, oil for the milking industry. And the second thing to do is to filter your oil. Filter it while you're running. The system that I've got, Susan, bring mm -hmm. in here. What we're doing here is really quite simple. We pull the oil out of the, out of the housing. We run it through water separation, water filtration. And then we simply run it through a, a, an external uh, pump that simply is, pumps the oil, brings the oil back up, and puts it back into the container. What this does, this allows the pump to do what the pump is designed to do, and that's to pull vacuum. We're not using it to move to move oil. That pump moves the oil. And this also allows us to actually pump oil in real time. And what I mean by that is we're running vacuum operations, the vacuum pump is running, and we're filtering the oil. Very important to pull the oil the water out of the oil as soon as it coalesces in the bottom of the tank. Mm -hmm. By doing that, 60 batches in. Looks like it, it's as pretty as the day it was when it was brand new. We get 500 millitor in just under five minutes, about four, four minutes, 40 seconds, which is the same as it was when it was brand new. We don't open it. We don't mess with it. We don't touch it. The pump likes it that way. Um, more to follow. Thanks, guys.